Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to talk, talk about a game in a very big box, Big City. Uh, this game is well out of print at this point. It was published originally in 1999 by Rio Grande Games. I think there's also a German version of it by uh, Goldseber, um, another games publisher. Oh, yeah, they actually have their logo on this American version as well. The game plays between uh, two and five players. The bo back of the box actually says it's best with four four or five. I, I actually think I prefer it with two or three, personally. Um, and it's for ages 10, 10 and up, and it plays, it says here, between 45 and 70 minutes, and I think that that range is right. It could really vary depending on how the game plays out. It is a city-building game where players are going to be using uh, property cards, deeds, to place buildings onto a board, and those buildings are going to score them points. I'll take a few minutes to show you the rules, which are a little bit convoluted, um, and then I will come back and give you my opinion on the game. Here we see what might look like the uh, start of a setup for a two-player game of uh, City Hall. Each player um, will get to place two of these um, city extensions. This starting space between 11 and 19 will always be there at the start of the game, and then at, generally after looking at their starting hand, trying to create adjacencies, for example, uh, this player has both 19 and 45, so they've lined up the 19 and 45 to create a two-block two, two area that they control. Um, players will place um, tiles to create a starting play area. So uh, each player will also get a score marker. There's this huge score track that I've put over here. I'll slide that out of the way just for the sake of uh, having space here. Um, as well as, like I said, they'll get five cards, one from each of these eight piles, um, actually one from each of the first five of these eight piles at the start of the game, and then um, each player will also get one of these huge player aids, which shows you some examples of the terminology on it, as well as the possible actions on your turn on one side, and on the other side it shows you the scoring uh, for each building type that you might build during the game. And then it also shows you the uh, building's prerequisites because at the start of the game, you'll only be able to build these residences, these businesses, and this uh, city hall. So um, the way the game works is that you're going to, on your turn, just do one of these actions. Generally, you want to do, you know, place a new building. That's how you're going to score your points. So I'll show you how that works first. Just to look at it here, place a new building, play the property cards, and place the, the uh, building. So you have to have deeds to build, then you'll score for that building, and then you'll draw new property cards, at least two per neighborhood, and that means per pile. You can only draw two from a given pile. So um, in practice, that would look something like this. So like I said, this player has these two cards here, the 19 and the 45. They might choose to build a building there. And again, like I said, generally at the start of the game, you're only going to be building residences or businesses. Since they've played two cards, they might choose to build a uh, residence. That would be two blocks long. That would just go on there on the two spots that they have the cards for. Those cards would get discarded out. They would score that building. We could see on the cheat sheet that the uh, double residence gives six points. They would just score that on the uh, score track. And then they would be able to draw two more cards. So the uh, player might choose to take two from the same section. Or they might start taking from these sections that haven't been played out yet. Um, in hopes of, you know, monopolizing that area. Uh, and then later they'll have the opportunity to add that section into the game. So this will go back and forth generally, uh, speaking with players building these residences and these, um, these businesses and scoring, you know, a small number of points for those. But the game really changes when somebody chooses to take their turn to build this uh, city hall token. And you can see here, the city hall token, it scores you zero points. Its prerequisite is that's built in the city center, so it would be not on the outskirts of the uh, board as it exists. Um, and then it's going to do a few things. First of all, it's going to unlock all of these other building types here. So the streetcar the uh, factories and parks, the church shopping center, banks, and the post office. You can't build those uh, until the city hall has been built. And then secondly, it's going to unlock some of these actions. So you'll be able to take the streetcar action. You'll be able to add a new neighborhood. Those actions will only be available once you've built city hall. Let me first explain these other two actions. So exchange cards. 
Um, if you want to, on your turn, you can exchange any number of cards. So what you do is you just, let's say, I didn't like these two that I got here, for, or I didn't want these three, I wanted more fours. I would just discard those to the bottom of the pile of each. So I would throw that down there. I throw this on the bottom of the three pile and this on the bottom of the uh, five pile. And then I could draw three cards to replenish my hand. At most two from one pile, so I might take two from the four and one from the one since City Hall was just built there, right? Um, generally, you want to build City Hall after you control some of the areas around where you're planning on placing it, um, just because City Hall will give you bonuses for the areas here. So if, if the player who built City Hall had these spaces, or the, not the diagonal space, but the uh, orthogonally adjacent spaces, that would be that'd be great for them. Um, and then finally, the uh, last action here is pass. If everybody ever passes um, because they choose not to build or um, they cannot build during their turn, that would trigger the end of the game. The game could also end if um, all neighborhood buildings get placed. So if every building in the game, and there's more than I have laying right here, get placed, then that would also trigger the end of the game. And whoever has the highest score at that point would win. Um, so... Just to go back to the, uh, oh yeah, so the uh, other actions that are unlocked once you um, once you play City Hall. First of all, the streetcar action. The first person to place the uh, streetcar, they get to choose a place for it to go. So let's say they put it here, they only get to place one. But then on subsequent turns, anybody who takes a streetcar action is going to be able to place two streetcars and start to determine the... Uh, the route of the uh, streetcar. And why would you want to do that? Because it gives you bonuses, as shown on here. If you place a residence next to a streetcar, you get times two. The same goes for a business. Businesses also benefit for being placed next to City Hall. So they get two times bonus if they're next to a streetcar, two times bonus if they're next to a City Hall, and if they're next to a, a streetcar and City Hall, they would get three times bonus. Um, it also, it, it also, these buildings down here generally will get streetcar bonuses as well. So these three building types. Um, so the last action is to add a neighborhood. So generally, let's say you've, you've drawn a bunch of these uh, six cards in previous turns af after you've done buildings, um, and you have more of those than your opponents, you might want to build one of build this neighborhood so that you could start building unimpeded before your opponents could get into that land especially if it's over here near where the streetcar is so let's say you place that there that would be your entire turn the requirement when you're placing this is that at least two of these uh, city blocks have to be adjacent to other city blocks that are on the board so that would also stand as an action for your turn so uh, just to go in these to these last building types that are available in the game um, the uh, the shopping center here is worth a whopping 30 points, but it has very strict requirements. It has to be adjacent to at least one residence, at least one business, at least one special building, which are these buildings down here, and the streetcar. So it takes a lot of setting up, and it's easily blocked, but if, you're man if you manage to build it, that could really swing the game in your way. Um, there are two types of special cards. I'll explain these next, the factory and the park. There's a one of each of those cards in each of the even numbered piles. The even numbered areas only have eight area areas, whereas the uh, odd numbers have nine. The ninth card in those decks is going to be either a park or a factory. Those don't give you any points to build, but they also could be built anywhere. They can't be. So you can see here there are at least um, two properties on the outskirts of the city is the requirement for this one. But when you build it, it's going to reduce the value of adjacent buildings by two. So it will reduce the scoring. So if you're not planning to build in an area, you see your opponents gearing up to build something over there, you might want to plop down a factory or a park. Um, and the park it has the requirement that there's at most one property on the outskirts of the city, which is the edge. And it increases the value of your residences and businesses by one. So that's also beneficial. So those, when you play those, you get a card... I don't have an example here. Um, like this. That allows you to build the park. And you notice it doesn't have a number on it. It could be played and placed anywhere. So that's very powerful. And it could essentially make somebody's deed for a specific spot on the board, or multiple deeds, in fact, invalid. So it's a good blocking move. 
So these three special buildings are each worth five points as a base. They have requirements of the bank, two adjacent buildings, or businesses, the cinema, two adjacent residences, the post office, at least one adjacent residence, one adjacent building. Those have five as their base value, and they have similar bonuses to the businesses for being next to a streetcar, city hall, or both. And then finally, the uh, church. The way that the uh, church works, um, you have to build it on the space in a neighborhood that has a double number, so a 55 or an 88 or a 33, and it has to be the last placement within a, that building area. So it would have to be the last building in the grid of 8 or 9 that is placed, and that's going to be worth 15 points. Um, again, that's just uh, another thing, you know, another reason to hold on to those cards when you get them. But then you either have to build up the rest of the neighborhood or wait until your opponents do. So those are the various types of buildings that are going to be built during the games. Every time you're building, you're generally going to be scoring points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game, again, that happens when either every player passes in succession or when all buildings are built, will be the winner. Okay, so that is Big City. Um, the game in practice is really a, a lighter game, but it does have a lot of weird rules exception, and that's why they have to give you this uh, massive player aid. There's a lot to keep track of and a lot of planning to go that goes into the uh, city building. You have to be worried about what your opponents might be trying to set up, especially with these buildings that have prerequisites. And being aware of that is really going to be key to your success in the game. At the same time, you don't have a tremendous amount of control over the game because your building is really restricted by the deed cards that you're lucky enough to draw. So it's an interesting game where, because of that, you're going to be almost at the mercy of the draw, but still required to do, you know, big moves. So it, it's a game that I think is somewhat divisive, um, because it feels like it should be a light city building game, you know, place a building, get points, but there are strategic considerations as well. Thinking about, you know, when to go into a city, when to start drawing cards, when to, you know, settle for building a two building, or when to save for a third card that would be adjacent. Um, things like that are big strategic considerations for this game if you want to do well, but they're not immediately apparent. It's, it, the first time you play it, it might seem that you know, you're at the mercy of the luck of the draw and there's not much that you can do about it, but um, over time, you can see the timing of when you play your cards and when you go into cities and responding to what your opponents do becomes where the meat of the game is. Um, you know, this is an older game, and I think it, it's somewhat dated in some of its mechanics. It's a little bit more convoluted than it might be, but at the same time, it has, you know, really fun old-school components. All these city blocks and, and buildings that you're going to place really look f great on the board at the end of the game. Um, I guess the only real caveat with the game is it's, you know, very out of print and somewhat in demand. So if you're going to find a copy, you'll, you'll be either very lucky or you'll probably pay a little, a, a pretty penny for it. So... Um, other than that, you know, it's a really interesting city building game. I like it better than a lot of the more contemporary city building games like Suburbia or the like, likes like, or games like that, rather. Um, so, but, you know, it's something of an acquired taste at the same time, because if you can't tolerate luck in your games, and if you want to, you know, have a grand plan for how you're going to build your city, um, that's not what you're going to find here. This is definitely a more tactical game where you have to do the best with what you have in your hand on every turn. So knowing that, you know, make your decision whether or not you want to seek out a copy of Big City. Um, but that is my take on the game, and thanks for watching.